Why am I, sir? You've never used them before. Non-determinism, otherwise known as free will, is realized in this notion of a chooser. But it's also revealed in scripture. The Bible from cover to cover contains countless examples of people making terrible choices that go against God's design. Check this out. I saw this years ago while reading the mechanical translation of the book of Genesis. God's creation is designed as a binary system. And our scripture translations use moral terms like good and evil. But it's actually a system of function and dysfunction. Let me explain. The ancient Hebrew of the book of Genesis literally reads like program language. For each day of creation, God makes a separation. He divides the heavens from the earth, light from darkness, and so on. And at the end of each quote-unquote day, God makes an assessment and finds it good. But the Hebrew word here is tov, and while our translations say it means good, everyone assumes that this is in a moral sense, but it's not. It's in a functional sense. So far, everything God has accomplished was functional, in other words, in good working order. Come to day seven, God creates man, breathes conscious life into him, sets him in the midst of this garden where there exists many trees producing food, but also an additional tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. No, it's the tree of the discernment of function and dysfunction. of which God told Adam not to eat of it on that day or he would die. In other words, not yet, it's too soon. If you notice, God does not deem Adam tov or good or functional like he has with everything else he had made. That alone speaks volumes. On to Genesis 2.18, God deems it not functional for Adam to exist alone. So he divides again, puts Adam in a quote-unquote trance, takes a piece of bone from his ribs, and from it makes the woman, Eve. Did God call it functional? Did he call it tov? No, he called them naked. Perhaps they're just hardware at this point, or as Isaac Asimov in iRobot, they're equipped with just the basic three laws operating system. There is a robot in this formation that does not belong. Identify it. One of us. Which one? One of us. How much did you say these things cost? These NS5s haven't been configured yet. They're still just hardware. Basic three laws operating system. That's it. They don't know any better. Now here's where it goes next level. In Genesis 3, enter in Nahash, the magician, the soothsayer, otherwise known as the serpent. And he's permitted to be there and prompts the woman to shift her focus from the bounty of beautiful trees producing more food than they could ever eat to this tree of discernment of function and dysfunction and entices her to partake of it so their quote unquote eyes will be opened. Now they realize their nakedness, or base programming, if you will. It's like illicit code or malware or something. But the fallen angels, the Watchers, continue to bring illicit, malicious technology to humans, specifically designed to bring humans to ruin, to destruction. What's interesting, in the third chapter, the standard translation reads that the tree was good to quote-unquote make one wise. What that word for wise means is to comprehend. Comprehension goes a step beyond, superficial or surface level interpretation to a deeper level of understanding. So the tree didn't provide some knowledge set like a skill like agriculture. Adam already knew agriculture. He had already been keeping the garden. What the tree provided is comprehension, a higher cognitive function like intellect, and there is a distinction. In the mechanical translation, the tree of the discernment of function and dysfunction is, quote, craving to make calculations, end quote. At this point, they knew they were naked, but filled with knowledge they weren't equipped to manage yet. So God God goes into damage control, and the whole thing reveals a move of free will on the part of Nahash, the serpent, to introduce dysfunction, and a choice made by the humans, made in ignorance, made in error. Fast forward to Genesis 6, and enter in the Watchers and the Nephilim, and that word dysfunction shows up all over the place. 
In verse 2, the sons of God, the fallen ones, saw the daughters of men that they were functional and took for themselves wives and created offspring. Everywhere in Genesis where giants are mentioned comes with that word, dysfunction. Is there a moral element in there? Sure, because the result of dysfunction is not just error, but choosing to move away, to move in opposition from God and act outside of God's design. 